everyone who are watching uh, this lightning talk i'm shivai i'm currently a tensorflow js sig member and working group member as well and i was also previously a google uh, tensorflow code and mentor and i'm currently also a production engineer at layer 5 so the talk of my uh, lightning presentation is machine learning for the web and introduction to tensorflow js so without wasting further ado let's get started the first question is you know people ask is why machine learning in javascript so for the one of the first reasons that we want to first introduce is what exactly is tensorflow so tensorflow is a free and open source library that is created by the team at google and is used for a lot of different kind of machine learning applications particularly in deep learning and neural networks and the question is that why introduce machine learning in javascript at the same time So JavaScript actually has a lot of different unique selling points when it comes to consideration of the type of language because of its lower latency, about user privacy, and then also writing code in just one single language that is using TensorFlow JS. Right. So, uh, and again, one of the biggest reasons is that we can use machine learning with JavaScript in any kind of an environment. JavaScript is the world's most popular programming language, and it finds its use in the browsers, in the servers, in the desktops, in mobile computing devices, and also in IoT, that is, Internet of Things devices. And to sort of note down a few examples, one of the most popular browsers that we use, like Chrome, Safari, Mozilla, or uh, running your code on the server side using Node.js, or having uh, like a mobile-based application uh, built using a cross-platform platform like React Native, or having a desktop-based uh, de development environment like Electron JS, or using Node.js with Raspberry Pi to create really wonderful IoT-based devices. JavaScript has support for all of these different spectrum of devices, and you can introduce machine learning with javascript and one of the biggest reasons why we want to do that is for creative professionals who are only learning javascript it can be very difficult for them to probably learn another type of language like python and introduce machine learning models in a cross platform application uh, that uses both python and also uses javascript so because of the versatility of javascript it finds great use to include machine learning in all of these different kind of devices and uh, developer experiences at the same time and the biggest fundamental of the tensorflow js library is that we can either use the existing models that are pre built or we can create our own or we can also use the concept of transfer learning to retrain uh, our existing uh, data uh, sets with these models at the same time and coming on to uh, you know because of the versatility of javascript we can use a uh, javascript and machine learning in all of the other different type or uh, type of applications that can be used with javascript so that includes things like augmented reality or let's say gesture based interactions or sound recognition and all of these different types of applications that we build in uh, the web platforms can be coupled with tensorflow js to create machine learning experiences that are going to be uh, blow your mind with some of the examples that we'll be showing you so the first category of uh, the such kind of models are the pre trained models now these are completely easy to use javascript classes that have been built and are completely open sourced or can be used with a single line of code uh, by embedding that to your javascript based project at the same time and there are many situations when you might not need like to use a could or create like a, a specific model and you can directly just use some of the pre built models for small applications that we are trying to build and a few examples of those include things like image classification object detection body segmentation pose estimation and also things related to nlp like text toxicity or for, for example let's say speech commands all of those come in handy and to visit these models you can simply go to tensorflow.org/js/models and you will find the github links for all of these different models at the same time now a few examples of these include uh, for example object recognition that is one of the most fundamental deep learning or machine learning based uh, projects that can be taken up and coco sd which is a really popular uh, object uh, recognition model uh, also is available in tensorflow js and it can be trained up to 90 different classes so as you can see in this uh, uh, picture that uh, we have a, a picture of two dogs and it can actually create bounding boxes on these dogs images of these dogs and give a really great confidence at the same time uh, to uh, the pictures so it's really great in doing it quick and also is highly accurate at the same time 
Now, there's another example of a face mesh. Now, face mesh is a model that is just three megabytes in size, and it actually recognizes over 468 different landmarks on your face. And uh, again, as you can see that it's really popular and being used right now in production in uh, in places like L'Oreal, which you can see on the right hand side, uh, being used in uh, production environments and uh, being actually used in products that are ready to go and ready to ship as and when required. Then there's another uh, model that we have uh, that basically is the bo body segmentation that can basically distinguish 24 different body areas in human bodies. And it can also do that in real time and also across multiple different bodies. So there's this need it doesn't need to be just one single body. As you can see in this video, there are three different individuals whose bodies are being segmented as compared to the background in real time. And again, without any performance overheads at all. Now, with a bit of creativity, we can emulate a lot of different superpowers using TensorFlow.js at the same time. And just to sort of show you examples of cross uh, development applications over here, uh, there's a person uh, who's from a community, a TensorFlow.js community in the United States has created this amazing laser application using WebGL shaders and with TensorFlow.js. And these are just some of the examples that you know we can think of to create such kind of unique creative applications. Then there is uh, uh, Jason Mays, who is a TensorFlow.js developer advocate at Google, is using a combination of WebRTC, A-Frame, that is uh, augmented reality, 3JS, and also TensorFlow.js to teleport himself to another environment by using a combination of all of these different three uh, different uh, technologies and combining them very seamlessly to create really fun applications. Now, there's another one that was created by Jason was a real-time clothing size estimation that uses the body segmentation model and can provide you the details of your body size by just scanning your uh, entire body. And within the next 10, 15 minutes, it can provide you a very quick uh, uh, body size estimation for your so that you this could be used uh, probably uh, in uh, sites like Amazon or other kind of uh, real world applications uh, when it comes to any kind of estimation that needs so not just related to the closing size at the same time. Now the idea is that we can combine different types of tech with uh, the TensorFlow.js. And again, this shows a really great example where it basically we are using WebXR, that is uh, the mixed reality, and we are also using WebGL to create this 3D uh, rendering of an augmented reality uh, application, where, for example, which sort of scans an image and creates a real world model of uh, an augmented reality model of this uh, statue, right? So the idea is that we can combine different types of technologies uh, that are supported in web very seamlessly. And uh, again, the integration is usually very simple at the same time. Now, the second part is uh, using transfer learning. So basically retraining some of the existing models that we have to work with your own data to sort of customize uh, those uh, models to your own data to provide you better accuracy and better functionality at the same time. So transfer learning is essentially taking an existing model and use it to basically uh, apply to similar kind of problems or in a similar kind of domain, such as probably like, you know, like say recognizing a cat instead of a dog, right? So. Again, uh, there are two different ways in which you can use the transfer learning. One of the most easiest ones is teachable machines. So basically, this is super easy way to actually use transfer learning. And it's a completely web based platform that allows you to either do uh, things like object recognition, pose estimations or uh, things on audio. So it's very simple. Uh, you just take an input, you provide uh, classes and the examples of those using video or audio or images, and then you just simply just put it on train. And as you can see that it provides you uh, in real time, uh, the uh, predictions and that predictions can also be exported and can be used with your web application, either using uh, the JavaScript models or using, uh, let's say, TensorFlow Lite and any other kind of different TensorFlow embeddings that we can think of. And if your data is in gigabytes or if you want to create a production ready model, we can also use the Cloud AutoML that basically lets you train custom engine models. And if you have data in more than gigabytes in size, it can simply just use this and we can deploy that directly to TensorFlow.js. Once we deploy it, it creates basically this model.json file that essentially has uh, the entire uh, model of how it works. And we can use uh, that simply with our application at the same time. And 
this is a very small example of a code. So in the first two lines, you see is what we have imported the TensorFlow.js library and also the auto ML library. Uh, in this third line, you see, we have simply just uh, taken an image of a daisy that is a flower. And we have just given uh, it the ID of daisy uh, for the image. And then the script that you see is not more than five lines in length. And what we do in this, uh, um, what we do in this is that we have created an async function because uh, the machine learning models take some time to load. So we would want to make the predictions only after the model has been loaded. So what we do is that we use an async function or an asynchronous function in JavaScript to first load our image classification model from our model.json file that has the characteristics or basically the dependencies of our machine learning model. And then we just uh, use the const image to get the document by ID for our uh, flower so we can get that particular image ID. And then what we do is that we simply run the predictions uh, using this and we use the classify to basically classify, okay, what type of a flower is it? So it will basically tell you what is uh, the classification or the label of the image, right? And uh, the probably the last one and the most powerful one is writing your own code in TensorFlow.js. So TensorFlow.js basically provides you two different types of APIs. One is the layers API that is built similar to how Keras works on top of TensorFlow. And that allows you to use some high level functions, but we also have the ops API or that is the lower level API where you can also, uh, you know, change the mathematical functions like the linear algebra uh, functions in your code that provides you a lot more fun flexibility and functionality when it comes to changing or writing your own code. Now this sort of gives you the architecture of how, what we have discussed so far. So the top level is the pre-built models. The next one is the layers API that is similar to how Keras has been built. And finally, we have at the most low level, the ops API. And this basically allows it to run either on the client side or on the server side or the client side, which basically is the interaction with the browser. We can have the support for the CPU or WebGL that is web accelerated graphics, or we have WebAssembly that used as the backend for powering the machine learning models in the client side. And we also have the server side that basically runs in Node.js. That is the TensorFlow CPU or the TensorFlow GPU, basically using the CUDA cores and uh, the uh, same power that Python based models can be using at the same time. And as we can see that we can either use some of the pre-built models that are there uh, in TensorFlow. So if you have a Python based model, we can use the TensorFlow saved model to be directly imported in the Node.js in the server side, or we can use the TFJS converter that basically converts a machine learning model written in Python to a one written in uh, JavaScript. And again, as you can see from the model that uh, from the model inference, basically this is a mobile net model that we have. And as you can see the difference between the performance of Python based model and like a JavaScript based model is very minuscule and the difference is not that much. Right. And uh, again, this shows another example of an, uh, of like um, an NLP based model that is the distal birth model. And I, as you can see that this is actually better as compared to the one that we see in Python. Now there are also five different, you know, uh, super uh, powers that you get with the client side. So one of the biggest one is privacy. You get lower latency because we're not having a dedicated server. We get a lower cost and again, interactivity at the same time. And also we, if you're using it on the server side, then uh, you basically get the power of JavaScript just in time compiler, or we can also just write in just one particular language. And of course we can run models that are much more powerful as compared to the client side because of the dedicated uh, CPU and GPU power that comes with uh, Node.js. So these are some of the uh, server side benefits at the same time. Now, just to uh, share some of the resources, uh, basically you can visit all of these different links, the website tensorflow.org slash JS and the models on tensorflow.org slash JS slash models. And again, you can visit all of these different links to get started with tensorflow.js at the same time. And uh, you can join the community by using hashtag made with TFJS and you can follow this on Twitter and on uh, links like LinkedIn. And again, uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, staying in touch and you can follow me on these links to get started. Again, thank you so much for um, staying and I hope that you like the presentation.